class for class 12 uh, you are 20 21 batch and so the very first chapter of class 12 or the very first section of class 12 is electrostatics and in electrostatics we have some subdivision of chapters like we have Coulomb's law, we have electric field and dipole, we have Gauss's theorem, we have electric potential and finally we have an application of these theories and that is the capacitor. These are the subdivisions. Anyways, uh, that is not the thing. We will gradually come to know about all the things. But right now, what I am trying to explain you at first is the word electrostatics. You see, electro came from electron. Obviously, you can understand that. And statics, in class 11, we have done mechanics, so we know what is statics. This means rest. So, electron at rest or charges at rest, in other words, uh, this is isn't it very peculiar to imagine charges to be at rest because we have always heard that electrons they are always moving because they are in the form always in the form of transferring energy but uh, how occur that electrons or charges they will be at rest how can we do that so these are the things that we will actually do in this section and before we are entering into the section let me also tell you what is charge <coughs> actually now charge means what we say the quantization of charge what is the amount of charge that uh, is feasible or possible in physical world that is very important and what is that so they have said that any charge the smallest existence of charge is electron okay so we say that we have two different charges, positive and negative and we always think that everything is actually electron because it is very difficult to you know transfer one proton from the nucleus but you, as you know you have done in chemistry that electrons can be transferred from the outermost uh, shells so in that way everything is electron now then how come positive how come negative because electron is a negatively charged particle we all know that it is very simple in a way that if we have excess of electron that is negatively charged so it's very interesting logic the word is negative and i'm talking about excess so excess of electron is negative and shortage of electrons absence of electrons that is positive charge okay so that means we have two different charges form of charges one is excess of electrons which is negatively charged body we have absence or shortage of electrons that is positively charged body and all these bodies should be integral multiple of electronic charge so we say that any charge that exists in nature should be the elect integral multiple of electronic charge which is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb okay we'll talk about coulomb you have already seen uh, his quotes uh, and he is the first who actually thought about this particular section of physics long back so now uh, let us see one picture and let me tell you some more interesting facts. Now this diagram is showing you the basic explanation of induction. You can see there is a glass rod carrying a positive charge is brought near a PQ, a rod PQ. And at the near end, we can see the opposite charge is induced. And this charge is called induced bound charge because this charge initially cannot move until and unless the glass rod is removed. So uh, at the far end at Q, you can see the induced free charge, which is opposite in nature. I mean, sorry, similar in nature, uh, which is being uh, induced at the far end. 
Now, if we connect this point Q to the earth, then this excess free induced charge will flow towards the earth and the glass rod, this rod PQ will have the negative charge at point P. Now, if we remove the glass rod from point P, near the, from the point uh, P, we can see this negative charge which was there at P, this will actually take all the position in the rod PQ and this shows how we can actually charge an object by the process of induction. Alright? Fine enough. So, you have understood this uh, thing. This is a very basic nature of charge and the charging an object by induction which will exhibit the basic nature of electrostatic charge. These all charges are at rest. I mean, they are static. And these all surfaces are insulated surface. Alright? So, now we will move to the Coulomb's law. Okay? Please watch it. Now we will be starting from the law, that is Coulomb's law. Now you are aware of everything. So now what Coulomb actually suggested, it is that, that when you have two charges placed somewhere in the space, uh, we will come to know about group of charges or pair of charges, more than pair of charges. But right now we are taking only two charges. Q1 and Q2, as you can see on the board, their distance is r, small r. Now they say, he said, Coulomb, sorry, that the force of attraction or repulsion, I mean, these two charges, they can attract each other if they are opposite charges, and one is positive, one is negative, then they will attract. If they are similar charges, I mean, both are negative or both are positive, then they will repel, whatever be the thing. So, these are non-contact forces. So, force of attraction or repulsion, which I have marked here, this is force on 1, Q1 due to Q2 and this is force on Q2 due to Q1. This way I will write, but generally we write F. Now we are just writing the magnitude, I am not writing the direction, we will come into this, uh, just after this. So he said that force is directly proportional to the product of charges. Fine. And it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Okay, very fine. So now we have to combine these two and we can write this. We will bring a constant and then constant is say k and we will write it is equal to q1 q2 by r square. So this is the expression for force. But now we have to know this constant. What is k? What does it stands for? Small k. That is a big question. Very good. So, what is K? K in SI system and in vacuum. That means free space. We are talking about the medium which is free space. That is the ideal situation. But we can place this charge anywhere. We can place it in water, oil, uh, glycerin, everywhere. Anywhere we can get this charge and we can calculate the force, but that will be a bit different from the ideal case, which is the free space or vacuum. Good. So that is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. <coughs> and the value is 9 into 10 to the power 9 unit you can understand. It is simple Newton meter square coulomb to the power minus 2. Okay, and what does this epsilon stands for? This stands for permittivity, permittivity of free space. As I was telling you, I am writing this expression or rewriting this constant k in a medium which is free space or vacuum. So, permittivity is a new word to you. What does it signify? It signifies simple thing. Now what is that? It just signifies one thing that how a medium is going to accommodate charges for their mutual force of attraction or repulsion. That means when we are keeping two charges in a particular medium like air or vacuum or something which is very very uh, light, then we will experience some amount of force which will be different when we will be placing these charges in benzene. Okay. Uh, is a covalent uh, liquid 
or we can uh, put it in uh, water which is a uh, covalent but it's a polar uh, solution or uh, sorry solvent so it will be experiencing difference so how a medium is going to accommodate charges for their mutual force of attraction or repulsion that is the measure of permittivity we'll come to know permittivity more details when we'll learn the chapter of capacitance okay then it will be more easier to you right now and it is also having a value which is also you have to remember my good that is 8.854 you can write up till 851 also into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter to the power minus 2 this 8.854 but you can remember till 8.85 doesn't matter no issue okay this values you have to remember so this is the absolute permittivity of uh, permittivity of permittivity of free space great so now we have the complete expression in a psi system we can write f equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square this is the magnitude of the coulomb force of attraction or repulsion for a pair of charges placed in free space or vacuum this is the expression we have great we have also learned about all these values and constants and everything. Now the thing is, since force is a vector quantity and we do not we can see, we cannot see anything. Can you see any vector here? No. So we cannot see any vector. We have to find out a vector expression for this particular law. And that is here. You can see a picture now. Here is another example. Uh, two identical metal spheres A and B given equal amount of positive charge. They repel each other with a force of 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 Newton. Another identical sphere C is now touched with A and then placed at the midpoint of AB. Find the resultant force on sphere C. Uh, this is the sum. Very, very basic uh, sum based on Coulomb's law. You can see uh, in the figure uh, the exact situation. Now here, A and B were equally charged of some positive charge, say Q, whatever. They were repelling what uh, force of 2 into 10 to the power minus 5. So I am writing 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q square by R square equals to 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 Newton, which is marked as equation 1. Now the sphere C comes, which is being touched with A. Now the sphere C is uncharged. So we need to touched with A since they have the identical you know shape and size and radius and everything so they will share the charges equally so now C will have a charge of Q by 2 and A will have a charge of Q by 2 now is the arrangement A, C and B as you can see so first of all I will try to calculate the force on C due to A which is F1 so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by 2 whole square because both the charges are q by 2 q by 2 each after touching so we are getting an expression 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by r square along ac that we can understand now we will calculate the force on c due to b which is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by 2 because q into q by 2 by r by 2 whole square which finally giving me an expression 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 q square by r square along bc so they are opposite to each other so net force will be f2 minus x1 so that is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by r square now you see in equation 1 we already got this expression the value of this expression 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by r square which was 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 so definitely the net force will be 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 newton along bc you see we are writing the magnitude we are writing the direction as well so don't forget this okay this is very basic example based on Coulomb's law do practice this sum do copy in your classwork let us do a simple problem uh, you can see in the picture a pit ball of mass 9 into 10 to the power minus 5 kg carries a charge of 5 mu c another pit ball of equal mass is placed 2 centimeter above the first pit ball what charge be given to the second ball so that the balls will remain in equilibrium so they are remaining in equilibrium in a vertical situation okay vertical position so obviously uh, we should start with the equilibrium thing and that means the weight and of the upper ball should be equal to the electrostatic repulsion they have the similar charges 
so they should have a repulsion you know they cannot attract this is the very first situation you should understand that if they attract then they will fall if they repel then only they can be in equilibrium they can balance their weight all right so here we go so we are writing the electrostatic force of attraction in the first step 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 by r square equals to mg so q2 equals to we have got an expression now we put all these values in the given expression that is mg r square by q1 into 4 pi epsilon not so just we'll put the value as we can see uh, we have put the values of the mass 9 into 10 to the power minus 5 g we have taken 9.8 and the distance was 2 cm which is 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 whole square and we have the q1 which is 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 because 5 mu c <coughs> and 4 pi epsilon not is 1 by 9 into 10 to the power 9 so we can write like that so calculating all this we can get the value of q2 that is 7.84 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb okay so this is the expression